All right, picking up where we just left off with that short little environment variable setup video, we're gonna go ahead and build out some routes. So I'm gonna come into this routes.ts file. I'm gonna reconfigure some things around to my personal preferences. We're gonna simply import the router specifically here, which changes up my syntax there slightly. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that tidbit there and voila, this routes file is now a routes template file. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this code and delete the routes file itself because I would rather have a routes folder because that gives me way more control than cramming everything into one file. So in my routes folder, I'm gonna make a new index.ts file, paste that code inside of there. In the routes folder, watch this, we're gonna have two subfolders, one called off, surprise, surprise, and one called API. Do I need to do this? Absolutely not, but I wanna make sure that all y'all feel comfortable stacking routers on top of routers on top of routers. This also allows me allows us to think of API as resources to protect or to make public, and auth will deal with the authentication logic. And that's something you could encounter in the real world. A server whose sole purpose is the authentication portion of the project, a server whose sole purpose is the resources of the project, and the two will communicate together with these tokens. So we're gonna kind of mimic that real world setup by having this fake little mini setup here, where I have one set of routes that begin with API and one set of routes that begin with auth. So each of these could have multiple files, which means we have to index them. So each of these subfolders get their own index as well. So there we go, and there we go. I'm gonna paste the code in both those indexes, which I believe I have, all three of my indexes have the same basic router code now. Thank goodness, I'm gonna close out some of the old files there. All right, so next thing's next. I need to, I'm going to index these two new subfolders I have here in my routes root index. So I'm gonna say import the API router from the API folders index import the auth router from its respective folder and wire the two up here. Router.use on the path of API, use the API routing index, and on auth, use the auth index like that. There we go, very cool. Let's go make a generic API endpoint to test with. So in the API folder, I'll make a new one called pizza.ts, paste, oh, paste the wrong code evidently. Let's go copy one of the other blank indexes, there we go. I'm going to go back to pizza, paste a route real quick, and we're gonna make it a router.get to the home path. It'll make the following response. Pizza time. Why pizza and why something so simple and dumb as this get request? It's because I wanna point out that it doesn't matter what you, want it to, what you want to protect when the time comes, we'll have that set up and ready to go. So this simply represents any route. Post, put, delete, get, doesn't matter. If it needs to be public, it's already good to go. If it needs to be private or protected, we're gonna apply a middleware right in between here that will then protect it for us as well as unlock some new options for us, which is really cool. So that's what pizza in this case actually represents and I just realized I misspelled it right there. So let's go actually spell it correctly in the file name. Pizza. All right, now that's an API endpoint, we're gonna head back to our API index now and wire this one up. So import the pizza router from the pizza file. And this API index will use on the path of pizza, the logic in the pizza router. So you still have forward slash API, forward slash pizza, like you might in one of your other projects, like forward slash chirps or forward slash blogs. But we also now have another diverging path called auth. So what we're gonna do is make a new one called the login router. Login.ts is gonna be a file in the auth folder. Paste that router code you still hopefully have. It's gonna be a post request that will contain a rec.body that is gonna to have to do a database lookup. So we're gonna go ahead and rec res this guy like that, async style, there we go. We're gonna write our try catch block, console log the error if one occurs, send some kind of bad status code or a 401 status code if something goes wrong with the login. Or let's, let's have some fun. That's what I always do like on all my projects. So my friends always send me messages when I build an app for a group of friends to do a certain small fun task because I'm just that guy in the friend group. I'm like, oh, I can code something for that. Just for fun because it gives you fun side projects to work on. And it is always hilarious when your friends text you and they're like, hey, I got an error saying you you suck at coding and it told me to tell you. And I was like, yep, that sounds like me from a couple of weeks ago. So always have some fun whenever you can. 
and we got to do some logic here, right? So we're going to say, we're going to receive a rec.body.email and a rec.body.password that we're going to have to attempt to validate here. Now, remember, you can't have a rec.body unless you have a body parser somewhere, which our boilerplate doesn't come with. So make sure you go over here and add your express.json body parser. I'm also going to go ahead and take this API router variable and call it routes instead, since it no longer represents just the API router, because it represents both the API router and the auth router. So I'm going to go ahead and change that up a hair there as well. So don't forget to add that part to your server. And if you want to make a more meaningful variable name, change it from that API router variable to the routes variable. Now, ultimately, what this thing needs to do is something we're going to cover in the next video and I think about it because you know what this video is going to be titled scaffolding out our routers and I think that's been enough index filing and pasting and copying code to make this one sweet and again I want to keep this shorter and modular in the walkthroughs to make it easier to dip back to bits I've coded rather than having to jump around like an hour and a half long video going wait what did you do there oh wait, what did you do 45 minutes ago what did you do 20 minutes ago now what do you do in the routes video and then I can just go double back to that so the next video we're actually going to code finally some logic about logging in and then building those JWT, or oh, that's redundant, or JSON web tokens. So see you soon for our first bit of actual login logic.